Hey everybody, Brandon with Bearded CB82. So, got some fun stuff to show you today. This is a little bit of the project we worked on yesterday. It's finally Friday, it's hotter than heck in the shop. So, stay tuned and we'll get you on over to some parts over there. So like I said, it's a hot one, so please bear with the sound of the fan in the background. Yeah, kind of hard to see, but it's right there in front of the door. But uh, yeah, triple digits today. Gotta love humidity. But anyways, as I was saying, so some brake component. Brake component, bleh. Said it was hot. I look like crap, I feel like crap. So we're gonna have fun doing this either way. But, um, See if I can, I might have to turn the camera around because the sun's screwing with crap. But anyways, uh, disc brakes on a semi. Yep, like I've told many of people before, deal with them plenty. So here's a brake pad. Yeah, this one, well this one was off of a steer axle from a little while back. Uh, I knew something wasn't quite right about it and there. Now to give you an idea, Oh, ah, here we go. Sorry, not exactly prepared. Oh. Here's what one with a couple hundred thousand miles looks like on it. Um, this is still a good one. We're keeping this set around as a spare. But, so here's wear and tear. I'd say close to new, maybe about another eighth inch and it would have been brand new as far as thickness. A lot of you guys are probably thinking, Oh my gosh, this is thin. Well, DOT or CSA regulation state 1.6 millimeters and uh, that's more like four millimeters thick. So we were fine there just when I was doing steer tires one day, saw they were bad. So changed them out. Ugh. Now, there we go. And here's the other side to Ugh, frickin' lighting sucks today. That one was a lot thinner, but thicker towards the back, which was what set it off for me. That probably rang pretty loud. Now yesterday, oh, let's see if I can find her here, aha. So we did uh, all drive brakes on a truck yesterday, and it had a 600 some thousand on it and here was the one brake that did the damage it wore clear down to the nubs and what happened was the caliper seized um, I'll switch the camera around here in a little bit but for the most part this is what they all looked like so they still had over half lifespan on it but since we had a bad caliper uh, got down so low because uh, it was sent down to us from Wisconsin it actually scoured the rotor as well so let me get the uh, camera angle flipped around yes I know this video sucks but oh well all right so here's what we were looking at now, 20 thousandths is the max gouge you can have as far as these. You can have, you know, the little bitty smooth waves as long as they're uh, not any deeper than I think, it, think it's 20 thousandths is the limit on that. And these couple right here were in there pretty good. And just similar where we just went ahead and said screw it, um, replaced it. And this thing is heavy. It weighs as much as a drum. Don't believe me, go find one, pick one up. So anyways, it bolts directly to the hub. Fun stuff. The new rotors do come with new bolts, in case you're wondering. Now the rotor, or the caliper. All right, there again, really big caliper. As you can see, you got your air can sits on back here actuates the uh, pist 
yeah the pistons wound up seizing in this particular one and that on this model is not a rebuildable item unfortunately but just is what it is this thing is also heavy it also weighs the better part of 80 or so pounds in case you were wondering there this is a bendix uh, dual piston but seized caused that which took out the other one so just make sure everything wore even we installed new brakes so but and this was on the front right drive um what few of these we have had to replace was that same one so i don't know what the heck's going on there i think this would be the third one we've had to replace in the three and a half years that i've worked here so either way heavy components you know wear your big boy pants when you're going to lift this shit <coughs> excuse me but uh yep like i said this thing's a better part of 100 pounds plus the other parts is what it is but at least at two pieces away relatively easily but that was my project yesterday so see how it does have a little bit of float the floats good but yeah just sees bound up in here I suppose later on if i get a chance take off the back plate show you Ugh. yeah i know well prepared uh probably take off this back plate if i get time later and uh, it's got the adjustment chain in there here's where your adjuster goes with your shear pin oh while we're on the subject of that uh, here is what your shear pin looks like if i can get it to focus come on come on there we go there it goes yeah it's basically like a nine millimeter external triple square and then you use a 10 millimeter socket uh, basically if this is bad when you go to adjust it and you keep on shearing these uh, if you shear two of these then it's time to replace the whole caliper that's per bendix uh, there's a couple other models out there where everything's a little bit different meritor uh, and what have you there's a couple other brands as well other than bendix and meritor uh, wabco has one out as well that operates differently from meritor but those are your options anyways just a little bit of fun whoops all right so as a uh, week comes to a close clean up my tools put trucks away and other than that i hope the rest of you guys have a very good father's day weekend uh, it's gonna be real hot around here so don't know how that's gonna do i got a fundraiser tomorrow i gotta do but anyways time to clean tools put trucks away and uh i'm gonna grab some water too it's hot remember shop safety is just as important as firearm safety you screw something up somebody could die we'll catch you later